Martha Montoya was 56 when her 37-year-old husband of five years brutally attacked and murdered her on August 20th, 2016, while her two children were home, leaving them to witness part of the murder. I came across her case on YouTube while listening to 911 calls, and I came across the calls that her daughters made that night. I will include those at the end of this film. Although there's not much information about Martha and her husband's relationship, especially not enough information to identify each of the eight stages of domestic violence homicides. So as a refresher, the eight stages of domestic violence homicides are as following. <clears throat> Number one, a pre-relationship history of stalking or abuse by the perpetrator. Number two, the romance develops quickly into a serious one. Number three, the relationship becomes dominated by coercive control. And I have a video on course of control if you want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. A trigger happens that threatens the perpetrator's control. This can be the end of a relationship or the loss of a job. Number five is escalation. An increase in the intensity or frequency of the partner's controlling tactics, such as stalking, threatening, or threatening to themselves. Number six is the perpetrator has a change in thinking. Um, this can be choosing to move on or deciding to act out revenge. Number seven is planning. This is where the perpetrator might buy a weapon or seek opportunities to get the victim alone. And number eight is the homicide itself. This is when the perpetrator kills their partner and possibly hurts others in the process, sometimes including children. And this is why domestic violence calls are so dangerous for police and first responders. As with all of my videos, I won't be naming this POS who killed her. I usually don't include pictures either, but I was rethinking that. What do you guys think? Do you guys want pictures of the perpetrators or should I just not even waste my time? It should also be noted that I'm not gonna talk about his defense, his background or anything about him, except what's relevant to the eight stages of domestic violence homicides and that pertains to the story's structure. I figure only God can judge him at this point, but on my end, I want his personal story to die along with him and dissolve into the dark depths of the prison system where he belongs. Martha Montoya had a beautiful free spirit. She left Columbia in the 1980s to travel before she settled down in Florida. There she found a job at a Palm Beach resort where she worked for over 23 years and she had two daughters. Martha's cousin says that Martha was in love with being in love, even if it wasn't the right thing. Despite this, however, her daughters were her number one priority and she was driven to provide a good life for them. She hoped that they would go to a university and she worked hard, she worked very hard to save money for their futures. She wanted them to graduate college debt-free. They were aged 16 and 12 at the time of her murder. In 2006, to help with bills, Martha rented out part of her house. She rented it out to people who know them say that he was quiet, but they never saw him be aggressive or violent. While he was living there, the two became friends and eventually a relationship developed. And that led to a marriage in 2011. I don't know if their relationship met the requirements of stage one in that there was a history of domestic violence or abuse. I'm also unclear on how fast the relationship developed, but it was five years from when he moved in and they got married. I'm not sure when, but at some point in their relationship, the pair got into an argument while driving and he actually pulled over and abandoned Martha and her two daughters on the side of the highway. Although we once again don't have enough information to determine more details about the dynamics of their relationship, this very well could have been a sign of course of control. By 2016, their relationship had soured. The girls began to feel uneasy around their stepfather, allegedly, and I have to say that because he was never officially charged for anything, their stepfather, started to become overly affectionate and would lie in bed with the girls. One evening, one of the daughters expressed her concerns about her stepfather and begged her mom to leave him. Martha, who always put her daughters first, was quick to agree. And on Friday, August 9th, 2016, the day before her 12-year-old's birthday, she confronted him and things took a dangerous turn. As the girls lay asleep in their beds, he walked in the front door. They didn't hear him. Therefore, we only have his and the forensic an analysis to account for the unfolding events. Prosecutors say that they believe the evidence shows that Martha had called him earlier in the day and confronted him and told him not to return to the house, but he did anyways. And he came back with the specific intention to kill her and did so with a knife and a sledgehammer. 
We can see that they have entered stage four when the perpetrator is triggered by something. I believe it was the confrontation. Following events entail stages six through eight simultaneously, or at least extremely rapidly in this case. Martha's youngest daughter recounts that she woke up to her mother screaming, my daughters, my daughters in Spanish. She ran to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, and rushed to wake her older sister. Then she bravely followed her mother's cries to her bedroom. She flung open the door and saw her mom on her bed, covered in blood, and her stepdad standing over her mom with a sledgehammer and a knife. When he saw her, he swung the sledgehammer at her. He didn't hit her, but he chased her out of the house. She was actually able to get to a neighbor and call 911. While he was chasing her out of the house, the eldest daughter also called 911. She locked all the doors and ran to her mom's room. When she saw her mom, Martha was trying her best to sit up on her bed, but she had been mortally wounded. Her daughter heard a window break. She absolutely panicked and ran outside. She hid under a trailer while on the phone with emergency services. Then she heard him come outside, start the car, and drive away. She stayed under the trailer until first responders arrived. Authorities found Martha on the bed. She had passed away from significant trauma to her head. The family was, and probably part of them still is, absolutely shocked and horrified. Martha's cousin took in the girls, and the family started a GoFundMe account to help with their expenses. It took two days of deliberation before the jury found him guilty of first-degree murder and aggravated assault for attacking Martha's youngest daughter. This is truly a shocking and tragic murder. My deepest condolences go out to Martha's family. Martha will be remembered for her loving, motherly, courageous spirit, her kind and caring nature, her honesty, and good sense of humor. Thank you so much for listening to Martha's story. If you find it in your heart, please light a candle for Martha or for anybody that you know that's lost their lives at the hand of domestic violence. And if you or anyone you know is experiencing domestic violence, please reach out. Reach out to a family, a friend, a local or national resource, Someone, just someone to let them know what's going on. Quietly, quietly make a safety plan. You do not deserve to live like this. You do not deserve to live that kind of life. And I promise that there are good people in the world who are waiting for you to make the first move so that they can help you. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Nine one one emergency. Hello. Um, I woke up from my nap and I heard my mom screaming, my daughters, and then I thought, 
I, I grabbed the knife and I woke up my sister. And I saw my my stepdad with a hammer, uh, uh, my mom yelling, and I tried to stab him to stop. And he looked back and he hit me with the hammer. And I didn't know what to do, so I panicked and I ran. I jumped over the fence and now I'm, the cops are here. Okay. Okay. Take take a deep breath. How how old are you? I'm I'm about to be 13 in two days. Okay. So you saw your father hitting your mother with a hammer? Okay. I need you to take a deep breath. Okay. Okay, now they are on the uh, they they are on the way, but uh, they're they're trying to get in safely, so so nobody else gets hurt. Where is the knife, and who got stabbed? I didn't. I don't remember where I put the knife. I think I dropped it because he hit me with a hammer on my arm. <laughs> I think she, I think they probably took my sister and my mom. Okay, did you stab your father with the knife, he said? No. Okay, you did not. Okay. I don't remember. He, I think he went in a red truck. Your father left? Yeah, because he was chasing me. He was chasing me after I jumped the fence with the hammer. Yeah, are you sure you're sending them? Yeah, I'm sending them. Where exactly are you right now? Can you can you walk? I this? ran to like I, I ran to the corner up the street, and now I I tried to get anybody that was there, and there were these two nice men who helped me, and I told them to get away from over there and to please call call somebody to help.